Over the last year or so, we've looked at lots of different twist patterns, things you can do for decorative or ornamental effect on a bar, either to make a handle for a tool like a fireplace poker or shovel, something like that, or to put in the middle of a longer bar that's going to be used as an element in a bigger project. One of the most requested twists is a pineapple twist. And the only reason I haven't done a pineapple twist is because there are lots of people out there doing pineapple twists. But since people have asked, I thought I'd go ahead and add my version of a pineapple twist to the mix out there on YouTube. And I'm going to start with a piece of three quarter inch square bar. This is a much longer bar than I need for the twist. And the reason I am using such a long bar is that when we are done with the twist, I will do something else with the rest of the bar. And most likely that'll be an all one piece fireplace poker or something like that. But we'll start by doing the twist so I've got that established. And then I'll just try not to mess it up when we do the rest of this. Now this is one that pays to lay out where you're going to put the twist so that you get all of your cuts even. This, is, this involves chisel cutting, twisting, squaring the bar back up, chisel cutting again, and then untwisting it. Hopefully that'll all make sense when we actually get to doing it. But the first thing I want to do is lay out the section that I want to do the twist in so all my chisel cuts are the same length. I'm just going to square around this with a, a pencil. Then I think I'll put a center punch mark in at the end of each of these so that I can find them again. So the first thing to do is to chisel a line straight down the center of all four sides of the bar. And I thought, just to be a little bit different, we'd go ahead and do that under the fly press. I've got this set up with a straight chisel and I put a fence in so it guarantees that we are centered with the bar. All I have to do is worry about how far to go end to end. Should be a really quick, efficient way to do it. So if our fence is set up correctly, all we have to do is find the, the end of the bar. Move it about a half a chisel or less each time. If you're going down the edge of a bar, this will make the bar bow, but if you're down the center, it should be just fine. If I cut a longer bar, I could hold on to one end, this would be a lot faster. So, for the next time, leave the bar longer. But we can get all the way down one side in a single heat here. Try and make your cut an even depth. You could set the depth stop on the fly press to account for that, but it's not too hard to just eyeball it. Now trying to eyeball a center line with a fly press is very difficult because the chisel is up in the air and you can't put it on the work to compare it. But there's one chisel cut. Straighten that out at the anvil between cuts. I'm going to do one cut on 180 degree faces. So the first face is down, and then we'll do the sides. This pair of tongs will make life easier, I think. Put some punch lube on that chisel, it wants to stick. I 
you know, being able to hold on to it makes a big difference. There's cut number two. So one on each side. And no, this video is not being sponsored by the Quick and Dirty Tool Company, but I do like their punch lube. It is helping to chisel quite a bit there. Until you burn it all off anyways. There's three sides. I think a double fence on this might have worked a little bit better along with a longer bar to hold on to. But I think we're in pretty good shape there. Now it's time to twist it. So put that in there right up to the edge of the Cut mark, and a twisting wrench in a similar place on the other end. It doesn't matter which way you twist it, just give it a nice twist. That's one full twist. And of course, this is a nice twist. We've looked at chiseled twists in the past. I think we're going to go one and a half twists. But there's nothing wrong with that if that's all you want to do. Our next step then is to destroy everything we just did by forging it back into a square bar. Leave the twist in, but forge it square. And for that we will use the power hammer just to get it done quickly. Be gentle.
So now that it's squared back up again, we're going to do the same four chisel cuts right down the length of the bar across all of the old chisel cuts. And we want to start at the same point. That would be too much punch lube on there burning off. But it's not going to hurt anything. So we'll go just the same length we did before. Oh, this is probably stretched, so it'll actually be a little longer this pass. Get it hot and do the next side. And just like before, I'll do the opposite face, so turning it 180 degrees. Line up with the original chisel cut. So I'm going to have to get another can of that stuff out. That one's about empty. But it makes a big difference. Okay. So that's two of the four sides. Something I have done under the fly press is set up kind of a spring-loaded second fence so it doesn't bind up, but it always keeps the piece you're working on pinched up against the fixed fence. And that works pretty well. But like so many things, if you're just doing one, sometimes dealing with what you have to deal with is okay. If you're going to do a whole bunch of these, it's well worth the time to strategize some more efficient methods.
should just about have us finished. Another pass back the other way to even it out. And there's our fourth cut. And of course take a little bit of time to straighten it out, it'll twist more cleanly. And then we go back and do a second twist. Only this time we're going to go in the opposite direction and probably only about half as many turns. But untwist it until you like what it looks like. Yeah, it's half as many turns, and I, I like the way that looks. And that is a pineapple twist. Now the more twists you put in this initially, the closer together these will be and the smaller your little diamonds will be. And that's just an aesthetic consideration, and you should experiment with it and see what you like best. That's a real classic twist. People really like the pineapple twists. They are good on door handles, fireplace tools, all sorts of stuff. They make interesting center elements in bars for pickets or stair railings, things like that. Lots of stuff you can do with a pineapple twist. You can do it just about any size material. This was done in three quarter inch bar stock because it really shows the effect very nicely. As I mentioned, the tighter you twist it, the smaller the pattern is going to be. So it's just a matter of what you want to achieve when you're doing the twist. Twist it up real tight and try it. Twist it up not so tight and try it. Make test pieces. These make good fireplace tool handles, so all of the test pieces can probably be used for something. And we will turn this big three-quarter inch bar into an all-one-piece fireplace poker sometime in the next week or so. I do hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. If you want to know when new videos post, there's a little bell icon down there next to the subscribe button. Ring that bell and you'll get notifications through YouTube when I post new videos. In the meantime, stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Feel free to share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. If you would like to help provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. These are merely donations. The content is free and will remain free.